Hey everyone, welcome back. Before I get into the stories, I need to mention that all of these stories are very dark and disturbing. The first and third story of this video mention children that have been sexually abused, so they're very dark. If you decide to listen any further, you've been warned. Without any more further interruptions, let's go ahead and get started. And remember, to always, stay hungry. This is a very long story, as it takes place throughout most of my childhood. For my personal safety, I wish to remain anonymous, and I'll be leaving out any real names. Also, I'm providing a severe trigger warning for every kind of child abuse in the book, but particularly sexual and emotional abuse. However, the story does have a happy ending. Just for context, I'm a female. So to start off, I had never had the best childhood in the beginning, although I tried my best to remain optimistic at a very young age. At the start, the only problem was that my family didn't have a ton of money to get by, and we didn't live in the nicest neighborhood. I was still the kind of kid that loved to go outside and make friends, especially when elementary school started. I was a huge troublemaker though, and I had behavior problems. I've recently discovered that I have symptoms of autism and bipolar disorder, so they probably played a role in making me somewhat rebellious and troublesome. I can't even remember when the abuse began, as I was so young probably around three years old though. Of course, my still developing mind couldn't process that the way I was being treated was so inhumanely wrong at the time. I perceived it as normal, because I just didn't know any better, which I've accepted now. While most of the abuse was sexual, there were also instances where physical, mental, and emotional abuse took place as well. 95% of the abuse was done by my biological father, who I won't name. Some of the abuse was done somewhat in the open, by which I mean some of my family was a witness to it. But the sexual abuse was entirely secret, as my father didn't want my mother to find out. When I was little, he would make me keep quiet about what he was doing to me, as he didn't want to get in trouble for it. This was my first indication then, although I was still too young to understand it, that what was being done to me wasn't right. However, I stayed silent afraid nobody would believe me about what I was going through. Side note, I have a little brother who I haven't seen in almost seven years. To summarize, he ended up with another family member after this entire story, and his new parents didn't believe my story, and they actually said that I was a bad influence on him. Just to point out, the worst thing I'd ever done to my little brother was pick stupid fights because we were siblings and siblings typically argue and make fun of each other. My brother is my world, and I would do anything to see him again. Anyway, going back to the main details, some of the worst parts of the abuse would be where my biological father would fat shame me just because I wouldn't eat some of the healthy food on my plate at dinner. I'm a really picky eater, and I only eat certain foods. Another sign of autism. Him telling me this horrible shit is one of the main reasons that I'm incredibly insecure of the way I look. He would also try to get me to believe that the stuff he was doing to me wasn't wrong, but I was slowly coming to my senses when I was around eight. One time was the most traumatic, and it's a day that's been ingrained into my head to this day. My father was touching me inappropriately and doing all sorts of disgusting things to me, and I finally spoke up and then pleaded for him to stop. I'm not kidding. He looked me dead in the eyes and then said, Do you want me to rape you? My own father, the man that I had looked up to for protection and guidance in the world had just threatened to rape me. Me, his own fucking seven to eight year old daughter. Of course, I just shook my head, fighting the tears that were gathering in my eyes. It was right at that moment that I grew terrified of my own father and that I never wanted to be around him again. However, I couldn't prevent it from happening because we still lived in the same house. And in his eyes, he was the parent and I was the child. So I had to listen to what he said. Eventually, I just resorted to numbing myself every time he would do something. 
I tried to think about something else just to cheer myself up and just wait until it was all over, even though it sometimes felt like hours before it was over. He did try to rape me several times, but he didn't in the end, but that still doesn't excuse the fact that he tried. Finally, after what seemed to be years and years, when I was around nine years old, my parents had separated and got a divorce. Only then did I find myself safe enough to tell my mother about what my father had done to me. She was absolutely outraged and horrified at finding this out, but she never reported it to the police. She only confronted him about it. She still allowed him to be around me and my brother, but to my absolute relief, no more abuse took place when he was around me. I still avoided him like the plague though, always going somewhere else when he was at my house. One person that I hadn't even told about this slowly started to piece it together, and that was my wonderful grandmother, who I still talk to and visit occasionally. She must have told some of my relatives in secret, because I was eventually taken away from my family and placed into foster care. Although I was scared of my new family at first, I quickly warmed up to them, and I finally felt safe in a new home. I was adopted when I was 13, and I've been really happy with them since. Unfortunately, this ending isn't entirely happy. In 2020, right when COVID was becoming a huge thing, my adoptive father died of cancer just under two years after he adopted me. His death nearly broke me completely, as unlike my biological father, I actually felt safe around him, and I saw him as a true father. He had a huge heart, and he really cared about all of his kids, including me. Regardless of this, my life has mostly been repaired since I was taken away from my old family, you know, despite suffering from moderate depression and severe anxiety. I'm now 19 years old and I'm in college, and regardless of the past trauma, I'm really working to be a happier person, and I'm on medication for my anxiety. I've become antisocial and quiet, but I still have close friends that I always go to if I'm feeling low and need someone to talk to, and I'm forever grateful to them for being there for me. My biggest goal in life is to be the exact opposite of what my biological parents were. I haven't seen them in several years, and I really hope it remains that way. I have a final saying in the story, and I'm happy to finally be getting this off my chest. To my biological father, I hope you fucking rot in hell where you belong. You're a sick and disgusting excuse for a human being. You're the reason I'm insecure, that I'm still scared of most men to this day, and the reason I'm so emotionally scarred even as I'm approaching my 20s. You're not a father, you're a monster. And to my biological mother, you had every opportunity to help me by reporting the story to the police. But instead, you only cared about yourself instead of your own daughter and son, and focused on getting out and getting wasted almost every night. I also hope that I never see you again either, because you've really gone downhill from who you once were. My grandparents didn't raise you to be like this, and they would be forever ashamed of you for what you've done. I'm way better off without you, and I'm happy that my perception of you is no longer warped. To those out there who have gone through something similar, you're not alone, and you never will be. I hope you have people you can reach out and talk to about what you've gone through, and I hope said people are supportive and caring. If anyone's going through any kind of abuse and feel like they can't get out of it, please talk to someone. If that someone's the kind of person you feel like can actually help you, don't hesitate to talk to them. It will absolutely help you in the long run. Stay safe out there, people. Hey everyone, I had submitted a story before about my abusive ex, but I'd like to share another story from my life. I'm sorry if it's long, but it's something that still bothers me to this day. Trigger warning for abuse and alcoholism. Growing up, I had lived with my mom and my sister. My mom and biological father had split up when I was a baby. When I was two and my sister was seven, my mom had met a man who we'll call Will for the sake of this story, and he had moved to America from England about 20 years prior. Will had been really nice to my mom in the beginning, 
telling her he'd take care of the bills and put everything in his name. Phones, housing, etc. My mom saw this as a great opportunity for saving, as she didn't have a super well-paying job at the time, and she was taking care of two children on her own. Will had a great job making enough money to get us by and still being more than comfortable. We all liked Will. He took us on a lot of vacations as he got lots of vacation time with his job. As years passed, my mom had started noticing that Will had an alcohol problem. Whenever he was drunk, he became arrogant and very verbally abusive. He'd call my mom names such as Fab Pig and Slob. My mom was a little heavier with muscle but definitely not what's considered fat. They'd argue a lot. He threatened my mom and he even threatened my sister and I with beatings if we got in his way. If he couldn't get through to my mom in arguments, he'd go to my sister. And since she's not the one to take anyone's shit, he'd sometimes end up yelling and arguing with me. As a kid, I'd get into fights with my sister and mom. This would make Will really mad and he'd end up hitting me and quote unquote, teaching me a lesson. As the years went on, the worse Will got. He'd accuse my mom of cheating on him and tried catching her cheating on him. He never did though, as my mom is a very loyal woman. He'd assume that anytime she hung out with a friend that she was really having an affair. He'd make her tell him when she was going and what she was doing. He was also big on not wasting food, and I mean even the littlest amounts of food. We'd have to finish all of our dinners, and if we didn't, he'd either force my sister and I to sit at the dinner table and finish the food, or he'd fish out whatever we threw out in the trash and actually eat it. I'm not kidding. He'd eat the food right out of the trash and then scream at us for wasting it. If we had moldy bread or food in our kitchen that was out of date, my mom would suggest that we throw it away. Will would argue with her though and tell her that it's perfectly good and there was no reason to get rid of it. He'd actually cut the mold off of the bread and then put it back in the back, then say, See? It's still good. Anything that Will would mess up or anytime he'd make a mistake, he'd blame my sister and I or my mom for his actions. Even when he argued with my mom, he'd tell her it was her fault for him having to yell, and his drinking only got worse. Some nights late into the night, Will wouldn't have come home yet, and my mom would come into my room saying, Go to your sister's room. When I go to her room, my mom would come in then saying, Will hasn't come home yet, but I know that when he does, he'll be drunk and angry. Please lock your door. And my sister would always lock it. We'd cry, but she'd assure me that I was safe with her. My mom and Will would split up twice, but my mom would get back with him since she felt trapped as this was her third marriage. She really wanted this one to work since the others hadn't. No judgment. I understood that it wasn't her fault. One night in October of 2017, they'd gotten into an argument because Will had come home late from the bar and he went back onto his usual rant, saying my mom was cheating on him since she had planned to meet up with a friend to get coffee before he went into surgery. My mom eventually found out from that event after he showed up to the coffee shop yelling at my mom that he'd put a GPS tracking device in her car to stalk her. Anyway, the night of the argument was the last straw. I had watched them from the steps of our house and I saw that Will had grabbed the house phone. He had started to call my mom's friend, the same one who she meant to meet up for the coffee. He started threatening him, saying that he'll quote, beat his crippled ass up as well as his son who had cerebral palsy. As my mom tried following him around the house, yelling for our friend to hang up the phone, I sat and watched him as he finally laid his hands on my mom. Will pushed her into the wall, leaving bruises on her arms. I was so incredibly frightened, and immediately my head went into fight or flight. So I went with the in-between option, which was to scream at him to get his hands off my mother. After that, we had called the cops, and my mom had filed an assault case against him. We moved into my grandmother's house, and I watched as my mom went into a deep depression. We had to go to the courthouse and fight for her justice. Unfortunately, however, even with me as a witness, and evidence and pictures of bruises on her arm in the shape of his fingerprints, she lost the case. We were so broken. 
Even after all this, he continued to stalk us, which eventually prompted us to move farther into the state. This event happened when I was 12. I'm now 19 years old. After the incident, I went through years of therapy. I had multiple therapists. I was diagnosed with severe depression, and I was eventually hospitalized at the age of 15 for a suicide attempt. I'm still in therapy, and I've also been diagnosed with PTSD and multiple anxiety disorders. Although this was a harsh story, we have a nice ending, as my mom had met a really nice man shortly after the incident, who is my sister's friend's dad. They've been together for almost seven years now, and married for almost two. He's a wonderful man, and he's treated us like we're his own children, and he's treated my mom like a queen. Thank you for listening to my story. Just know you're not alone if you're in a similar situation. Please stay safe. By the way, we later found out that Will had gotten with another woman and pulled the same shit. Her 18-year-old son had defended her and knocked all of Will's teeth out. Nice going, kid. We really applaud you for that. I live in the UK, Johnstone in Scotland. When I was a little girl, I was in the care system due to my mother having a mental breakdown, then being taken into a mental hospital for treatment. I was in the care system from the age of 5 years old until I was 10 years old. You see, there was already much abuse in my family, as my mother had taken on my aunt, and my other aunt went to stay with my oldest aunt, due to my grand being an alcoholic. There was one member of staff in particular who took an unhealthy interest in me, as when I went into care, let's just say I was an emotional child. As I was away from my mother, I always kept crying for my mother, and he knew that I was maybe more vulnerable than the other children in the care. But I also sensed from being a baby that I was an unwanted child, as my mother made it clear the older I got. So I was sharing a room with let's just call her Sasha. We were the same age, but there was only a few months age gap between us, and I was little. I was between the age of 5 years old and 7 years old, when let's call him Fred came into the room that Sasha and I shared, as he would be doing his rounds to make sure we were all asleep. But then, he came under my bed. I was sleeping, but then somehow subconsciously, I felt someone near me. I started at this point to finally wake up. Then I started dozing out of sleep, when Fred turned me to my left side. He then pulled down my underwear and PJ bottoms while I was dozing in and out of sleep. He lay down in my back, turning me on my side, and then raped my back passage. Just as he did that, another member of the staff that was also on sleep duty caught him doing this, and I overheard her saying, you really better hope she doesn't remember any of this. I then woke up right at this point, and so did Sasha, and Sasha then shouted, What did you do to her? All she was told was to go back to sleep. Right at this point, I had seen Fred standing at the bottom of my bed, as well as the female staff member, and they were pulling up my pants and PJs, and they told me to just go back to sleep, that I must have just had a bad dream. I'm now 38 years old, and I've only just remembered what happened to me very recently. I've reported it to the police. I can now understand why I suffer with really bad anxiety, as well as all the fear I've had over the last 30 years. It's because of what he did to me. I've also previously had neighbors and friends of family who've told me they'd stayed over, and they'd hear me crying in my sleep and shouting. And they'll ask me, what's happened to you that you don't know about? And when they asked me the next morning what's going on, I had no recollection of it the next day. I've been doing that in my sleep from the age of 10 years old. So for the past 21 years of my life, he's controlled my life. But not anymore. I'm awaiting news from the police, as I really suspect there's more that he's done. And he could still be working with kids and teenagers to this day. I'll be sure to send in an update as soon as I hear back from the police if he'll be prosecuted or not, or if any further action will be taken. Hey everyone, I hope you all enjoyed these stories. If you ever want to submit your own, 
you can do so at southerncannibal.com. Have a good night, everyone. And remember, to always... <laughs>